Hey there, we want to talk to you today about wax management. We all have it. We have all different forms of it, good, bad, and the ugly. Um, it's a wonderful resource that we cannot recreate. It's equally as valuable as honey, and you need to know what to do with all the different forms. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about today is the wet frame. This is right after honey extraction. You end up with frames that are messy and pretty wrecked, and that's totally okay. Your options with this would be, you can set them out in your hive butler and capping tank and let the bees clean it out for you. It takes about two days. It does create a bee emergency, so you don't want to do it where you're going to be nearby. I know in Australia, they are not even allowed to do that, but that is something that we'll typically do. The bees will dry these frames out beautifully. You, if you have a small hive, you might actually want to put this back into a hive and let them harvest it within the box, clean it out and reconstruct it. If you're going to store it over the winter, it needs to go into the freezer once they've cleaned it off. I love to let the bees clean off my wet frames. Um, it allows them to uh, collect every last molecule of honey, which they usually need, and it gives me a really nice dry frame to put into my freezer. All right, so talking about frame management, one of the uh, protocols that I use is I write the size of the frame, medium, deep, or shallow, and then the year that I built it or began using it. So we're on a three or four year rotation. It depends on how, uh, how we use them. Are they brood frames? They go out faster. Once they start looking black and dark, we'll um, harvest them and melt them down. But honey frames I use a little bit longer. After the bees have dried it out for me, I'm lucky enough to have just the right size basket to get frames in. I put them in for 36 hours. Once they come out of the freezer, they go into a hive butler with a desiccant packet for storage over winter. In the past, the typical way to store honey supers was to stack them up with the drawn frames inside the stack and then put paramoth and insecticide in a receptacle at the top of the stack and cover the whole thing. The fumes from the toxic chemical go down through and kill off any bugs that might get in. It's an insecticide. In the spring, you need to air out your frames before you could use them. One of the reasons I developed the hive butler was to get away from that process. I wanted my frames to be kept clean and safe from moth, from mice, from any other pests without having to use a toxic insecticide. I process my drawn comb honey extraction frames into the freezer for 36 hours and then into the hive butlers for winter storage. I do put in a desiccant packet for any excess moisture. We successfully overwintered last year 10 hive butlers full of 10 frames each. We were very happy with how they performed. So here is a frame that is old and isn't going to make the cut for next year. I'm not going to just throw away this wax. I need to cut it off and it's going to go into my little crock pot. Working with the wax is messy. You don't want to do it in your house or in your garage. The wax sticks to everything. So do it somewhere that you're not going to care what gets left behind. beeswax doesn't even have to be a beekeeper people who make cosmetic products people who make candles um, then unique things like hand sewers will often use a little um, pad of wax to run their needles through quilters so great uses like that and then um, a lot of more obscure ones like ski wax and mustache wax and 
um, all kinds of things. Because I don't use plastic foundation, I do not have to keep a lot of wax available for my personal use. So I found this tiny little crock pot at Goodwill. Um, these are the cappings that came out of my recent extraction after the bees had cleaned them out. They're just dry as they could be. Um, so I just dump them in my little crock pot to make enough of a collection that I can melt down. So that's what this frame is gonna do. Can condense it all in and just put it all in my little crock pot and I'll turn it on and get it all melted down. Never forget that your wax is equally as valuable as your honey. So not just managing your frames for overwinter, but you have to take care of your boxes as well. This is a super that we brought in. It is full of propolis, which is a magical product that you don't want to throw away. But I need to get it cleaned out and get ready for winter storage. And I'm going to show you how we do it. are the only insect on the whole entire planet that make three really incredible beneficial products that we can't make. Number one of course is honey, number two is beeswax, and number three is propolis. You may not have heard of it. It's naturally antibacterial, antimicrobial. The bees use it to coat the inside of their home to keep bacteria out. Any place that there's a draft, they'll use propolis. It's created from tree saps and we don't know exactly how they make it, but it is a resource that you need to claim and keep and possibly even sell. Here's my bag of propolis. So I can add this to it. Break it up. The way to clean it is to freeze it and then break it into as small a bits as you can even using a hammer. So I'm gonna put it back in the freezer and freeze it and get it cleaned up. It would seem like fall is the time when the beekeeper's work slows down, but not yet. We're still doing all this cleaning and preparing for overwintering and there's a lot of work yet to do. We're still gonna talk about candy boards in our upcoming video. If you like our channel, please subscribe and leave us a comment what else you would like to see.